All right, let's get right into it, my beautiful people. So first, let's go over the concept of how to get your body to heal diseases. Now, it's a very simple concept. Um, what causes disease is a buildup of inflammation, which comes from eating acidic foods. There are only two types of foods, acidic and alkaline. And so when you build up this inflammation, it causes um, your mucous membrane to be compromised, which causes a buildup of excess mucus in different places of your body. And wherever there is excess mucus, there's disease. So the concept to, heal, to getting your body to heal itself first is you want to get your body back in the alkaline state. So you want to eat all alkaline foods. Now, Dr. Savy, he has a list that I'll put down in the description Basically, in order to figure out which foods are alkaline, it's very easy. You can get an alkaline tester and you can test your food and you want to eat foods that have a pH of 7 and above. Anything 6.9 and below is acidic. So you want to eat foods 7 and above. And another way to um, figure out which foods you're supposed to be eating, which foods are perfect alkaline foods, is by not eating anything that's been modified or hybridized or you know genetically modified in any way so like carrots they were um it's it's a combination of two plants and carrots were actually created i believe in 1850 you can look them up but dr sabi has already went in and researched pretty much every single food on the face of this earth to come up with this list but with that concept you guys can do it for yourselves so you also want to drink your alkaline water. So the easiest way to do this is just by going on Amazon and buying a $50 alkaline filter. It's very simple. It's very funny how all the waters at your um, local store are going to be acidic. You know, there are very few alkaline waters out there, but you can definitely get a $50 filter and filter them yourself. So now what you're doing is in eating these alkaline foods and getting rid of acidic foods, you're putting your body back into an alkaline state. And in doing this, you're also removing mucus from your body, excess mucus. Now, there are certain herbs that I'm going to go over that are designed to get rid of inflammation and to get rid of this excess mucus. So the first thing you want to do is eat alkaline foods, drink alkaline water, get your body back into an alkaline state. The second thing you want to do is eat the herbs that are going to get rid of this inflammation that are also going to get rid of this excess mucus as well as herbs that are going to cleanse different parts of your body there are different herbs for every single part of your body and the amazing thing is there isn't one herb you know that cleans your liver or one herb that cleans your blood or one herb that cleans your gut there's so many different herbs like nature has given us everything god has given us everything the herbs are for the healing of the nations. So we'll get a little deeper into that. I'll put up a bunch of links in the descriptions where you can, you know, find different herbs and find different people who have a lot of knowledge and insight on these herbs. Cause I'm, I'm by no means a uh, expert or a master at this. So I'm just going to give you the things that I've used myself and the things that have worked. So you want to eat the right herbs. So, you want to have a regimen of herbs when you're trying to heal yourself that is going to cleanse your entire body. But say, for example, if you have cancer, there are specific herbs that prevent cancer and there are specific herbs that fight cancer. You know, herbs that fight cancer in different parts of the body, herbs that fight cancer in your throat. Um, but you want to figure out where the mucus is for whatever disease you have. Like, say, for example, HIV, which people think is incurable, which is funny. But um, the mucus is in your blood. It's in your cells. And it's in your lymph node system. So you want to eat herbs that are going to, one, cleanse your blood, burdock root. There are so many different ones, though. And this is an amazing thing. It's all been researched and everything I'm telling you, you can just Google. It's not hard to figure out what herbs to eat now. You know, you can literally type in what herbs are, are good blood cleansers. Um, then you want to cleanse your lymph lymphatic system in two different ways. 
there are herbs that are going to um, strengthen your lymphatic system, like burdock root is is, is a big one as well. Um, and what that does is it's going to allow your lymphatic system, which is your drainage system of all the, the, the um, viruses and things like that that your body gets rid of, it's going to help drain it. Because when you start, when you get any disease or any sickness, you're going to get lumps in your lymphatic system. That's you know, fluid being built up because your body's trying to get rid of whatever's in you. That's what mucus is for. You know, mucus is not a bad thing. Your body wants to contain whatever it is that that's harming you, whatever virus, whatever living bacteria is inside of you. It wants to contain it in mucus and push it out. But when you get access mucus, that's when things become stagnant. So then you want to strengthen your immune system. So you have all kind of herbs that will do just that. You know, you have your um, goji berries, you have your elderberries. And one more one more place that the mucus builds up for this particular disease is um, in your skin. So then you want to take herbs that are going to cleanse the skin, cleanse the cells, like um, blessed thistle. That actually gets into the cell and cleanses the cell herpes you know that's totally curable and i'm going to put a bunch of links down in the description there are guys who have way more knowledge on this than i have you know but they're going to tell you what herbs or work for it they're going to tell you how it likes to hide itself in your spinal cord and how you can do things like take coconut oil and um rub it on your back and then also put on top of the cocoa, coconut oil, some uh, essential oregano oil and rub that in because the virus likes to hide itself in your spinal cord, your central nervous system. And being that your skin is the biggest organ of your body, it will absorb directly through your skin and go straight to work. But like I said, there will be so many links in the description for you guys. But the biggest thing you have to do when it comes to curing the disease is you want to fast now when you fast there are many benefits the body does so many things once again you can google it youtube it but a big thing that it does is there's a um, process where when you fast for 24 hours your body begins just like it eats old fat and it digests uh, it, it gets rid of fat in your body your cells begin to eat up the old cells you know, a lot of a lot of disease resides within old, beat up, rundown cells, and it will begin to eat up the cells, and it will begin to build more cells to to duplicate them. And this process increases by three hundred percent when you start to fast. So now there's going to be in the um, description a link for a website called GodCuredMe.com. This is a guy who was taught by Dr. Sabi exactly how to fast. Now, fasting is literally the most important thing that you're going to have to do if you're trying to overcome any major disease. Now, please look at this website and look at all the videos before you begin to fast because he's going to tell you a lot of things that I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to brush over a few things, a few important things, but... What you want to do is just starting with, with food, okay? You're going to want to eat twice a day within a four-hour four hour window. When you first wake up, you want to eat your fruit. Now, you can do this at night or in the morning whenever you want, but I'm just going to say when you first wake up for the sake of um, me explaining this. So you will wake up and you will eat your fruit. And then you will wait four hours and then you will eat some type of of a solid meal now joaquin is a good one you can also have the um saute salad which i made a video on and um there are many different different meals you can have you know just type in alkaline vegan meals and they'll um come up with hundreds of them but you want to eat a light meal and then for the rest of the day you want to fast now you can even go a step further and only drink liquids Okay, and you can even go a step further like I did and only eat herbs, you know, and I'll give you a little more insight on which herbs you can eat so that you won't get hungry, you know, which herbs will help you get rid of the craving for um, carbs and things like that. But he's going to go very deep into how to how to fast, you know, but 
The first thing is you just want to eat those two meals a day. And say, for example, if you go even deeper and only eat one and only eat liquids or only eat herbs, what you're doing is your body literally uses 60% of its energy to digest food. So you want to get rid of that process almost completely. You want to allow your body to use all its energy on healing itself. Okay. So you want to feed it the right herbs. You want to get rid of the inflammation. You want to get rid of the excess mucus and you want to allow your body to work. You want to allow your body to rebuild cells. You want to allow your body to use these herbs because another important thing is food is information. Now, every single one of your cells are exactly alike. They're all identical, but depending on what is needed, they read your DNA and they become what you need. If you know, when your fingernails are growing, that's because cells are reading the DNA on what fingernail, how fingernails are made and they're transforming themselves into fingernails, into hair, into new skin, into whatever the body needs. They would trans- transmutate into that. So when you eat food, you're eating food that has DNA in it. And this DNA then tells your body what to do. It tells your cells, oh, burdock root, okay, we need to go and cleanse the blood. Okay, this or okay, we need to cleanse the liver. Okay, we need to cleanse this. And that's the most important process. So when you fast and you eat the herbs that are telling your body what it needs to do, then your body can put full attention on what it needs to do. So just a quick recap, you want to get rid of your um, inflammation and mucus by eating the alkaline diet. And then you want to fast so that your body can work, so that your body can get rid of whatever's going, whatever's going on and it can focus its full attention on that. And then you want to make sure that you take the herbs that are going to attack whatever ailment you have. Okay, so now when you're fasting, good, great herbs to have. I mean, these are just great herbs, period. But one, moringa leaf. Okay, just just look up the um, benefits of moringa leaf. It's very high in iron, iron which a lot of us are, are very deficient in. But it has protein in it, and it's just one of those those herbs that will give you that sense of, of food, you know, give you that sense of being full. And then you also want to take your bladderwrack and sea moss now sea moss is also called irish moss now bladderwrack oh my god bladderwrack has so many benefits you know but first with um sea moss sea moss has 92 of the 119 minerals that your body needs now that's another big thing you need to eat foods that are not only compatible with your dna which are alkaline foods electric foods but you need to eat foods that are made of the things that you are made of you know the trace metals you're made of the minerals that you're made of so you want to eat your sea moss aka irish moss everything i speak about on here everything you'll look up you can find it on amazon just make sure it's non-gmo and and get the highest quality that you can now bladder rack is going to have the rest of the um the or the the minerals that you're going to need but it's also high in iodine and iodine is extremely important when it comes to the the process of your cells and how your body works so they'll tell you you know table salt has iodine in it which is a funniest thing I've ever heard you know we'll get we'll talk about that in a little bit but you want to take your bladder rack and your sea moss okay so sea moss you can take it so many different ways i like to take straight sea moss i just you know wash it soak it wash it again and i eat it but say for example if you're fasting you know you can blend it up make a sea moss paste you'll you can find a video on that on, on youtube and then just put it into your smoothie you know very simple 100 it has 92 of the minerals you need so also, you need to get in your carbon, you need to get in your trace metals, your iron, silver, your colloidic silver. There are many different things. And like I said, it'll all be in the links. So another really big thing you want to do when trying to heal yourself is get rid of all these heavy metals that are in your body. Now, there are a lot of different um, herbs that can do this. Um, 
bladder rack actually gets rid of heavy metals but you can also use um, pure clay now on the website godcureme.com you'll find a link where he gives you an Amazon link where you can buy pure clay it, it take this once once or twice a day and it will strip your body of the heavy metals you have you know we use aluminum foil all the time we use these Teflon pots and that's why you want to go ahead and look at um, all the videos because you're going to tell you things like that no microwave while you're trying to cure a disease no aluminum foil no Teflon pots he's going to tell you all the things that are going against the process and another thing that's very important is cleansing the inside of your cells you know bless this so is a good one is a good herb for that and there are many different herbs so one book that you guys um, all need to buy is alkaline herbal medicines by Aquil Aeneas now you can find this on Amazon for 10 or 15 bucks but he has a, a, a list of all the different herbs that dr. Savy uses you know he tells you exactly what they do exactly what they what they work on and this is just you know condensing this information because this information is all over you can find it in so many different ways like when you go down into the description box you're gonna find all kind of websites and in different places that are gonna tell you all kinds of herbs and remedies and things you can use but I'm just trying to condense things for you guys to make your research as as easy as possible because I can't give you the fish I have to teach you how to fish you know we have to all become good at this so by saying that I want to speak about um the OSHA foundation OSHA foundation this is the village that Dr. Sabi um created and this is where he's been healing diseases since the 80s you know now just a little bit on Dr. Sabi he was actually charged by the state of New York for um practicing medicine without a license because he was putting in the paper back in 1986, 87, that he could cure AIDS, that he could cure cancer, and he was doing it. The judge told Dr. Sabi to bring in one patient for every disease that he supposedly cured. Dr. Sabi brought in 77 patients with the documentation saying this guy was HIV positive. Three weeks later, a month later, three months later, He's HIV negative. This guy had cancer. This guy no longer has cancer. And he actually won that court case. Like it's a it's a great story. Just um YouTube it and you'll you'll find it. But there are things in, in the at the Osha Village that we can't find in America. Like they have the hot spring, the hot thermal water, which is coming directly from a volcano. It has a lot of sulfur in it. But the pH level is like a 9.0 it's an amazing water they have the sapo fruit which is pretty much the vegetable chemotherapy but it's real chemotherapy It's not gonna kill all your cells It's gonna just kill the cancerous bad cells so please we have to support the Usha village like we can literally have an Usha village in every city like when if you go to the Usha village and you allow them to cure you they tell you everything they're amazing people you know unfortunately dr. Sabi passed on but his daughter is running the village. His son is always there, you know, teaching, giving knowledge. This information is here for us again, family. Like, we don't have to search that hard. You know, you. I want you guys to research this and get good at this. You know, I need somebody out there to make an alkaline restaurant. You know, I need, you know, make a make an alkaline store within your own home for your community. You know, we need to heal one another. You know, my women are women. You guys are the healers, you know. You guys are the ones who take, you know, like me, I eat plain sea moss. <laughs> you guys are the one who make sea moss milk. You know, you guys are the ones who make the recipes, who will, you know, grind up Brazilian nuts, you know, blend them up with water, strain them, put some cinnamon and some agave, and then put the sea moss in there and make a delicious, a delicious milk for our, our beautiful children, for our, for our entire community, you know. But please look into the um, OSHA, found OSHA Foundation. There will definitely be links in the description. If you guys can go, go. It's in Honduras. They're amazing. Let's, let's take this knowledge to the next level. Okay, so I just want to continue on telling you guys some really good um, 
herbs like spirilla. Spirilla is a really good one. It fights HIV, um, candida, so many different diseases. Um, oregano. Oregano and mulan. These are beast herbs. Now, these herbs particularly strip your body of excess mucus. You all want to be on oregano and mulan when you start your fast or when you start your healing process. Now, oregano specifically targets the the mucus in your sinuses and in your throat, while mulan is going to pull it from your entire body. Now, when you're taking these herbs, and that's all herbs, what you have to remember is there are literally three ways to take herbs. One, as a tea. Two, just eating the herb itself. And three, grinding it up and, and taking it in pill form. You can also buy it ground up. You can buy the powders, which are just the herbs, you know, ground up. Like you can take a neutral bullet and just grind your herbs up. That's what I do. Um, just so that I know exactly what I'm what I'm taking. But um, just grind the herbs up and put them in pill form. But when you take it in tea form, you know, say for example, we're, t you we're taking oregano. The way you would do it is you would boil a pot of water, a cup of water, one cup for one tablespoon of oregano. So you'll boil your water. And then once it's boiled, pour your oregano in and then turn off the fire, put a pot and put a top on it and let it steep for about five minutes. And what this is going to do is going to pull everything from this oregano. This is the most potent way to take an herb in a tea form. But now I don't want you guys to overwhelm yourselves because most of these herbs, they don't taste like anything. Like oregano was my favorite when I first started taking it. But the smell is very pungent. The smell of oregano is, is very pungent. And I was drinking it like twice a night. And yeah, it, it really started working. You know, I was coughing up mucus nonstop for maybe three weeks, maybe a little longer. But it was completely nonstop. It, I won't even go into it. It was, it was pretty bad. I was I, I was actually a little scared. Like, what is going on? <laughs> but um, yeah, you you it goes directly into the bloodstream, you know. And whenever you're taking a tea or you're taking any herb that's going directly into the bloodstream, you want to take cayenne pepper. That's another beast. Cayenne pepper, pure cayenne pepper, like non-GMO, non-refined pure cayenne pepper once again you can find it all on amazon but what cayenne pepper does is it it stimulates blood flow and it's going to get that herb exactly to where it needs to be so you want to take the most important herbs like say for example you're, you're cleansing out so the first thing you want to do is what get rid of the mucus you want to take that oregano mulan as a tea okay the other herbs that are you know helping with the process okay you're trying to clean you don't really have anything wrong per se with your liver but you still you want to cleanse your entire body you can take those herbs as in pill form you know it's going to take a little longer for them to do their job but they're going to do their job but so like i said if you're trying to cleanse your blood because you have something wrong with your blood whatever herb you're taking for your blood you want to take that in tea form you know the most important herbs that you need to take take them in tea form and the other herbs take them in pill form. Now, pill form is very important too, especially when you're fasting, because it's substance. It's going to give you the fiber. It's going to give you substance. So it's going to keep you from getting hungry. Now, another thing you want to take when you're fasting is black seed oil. Black seed oil is another one of those beast herbs. Just like I said, just Google all these different herbs. Just type in health benefits of this herb and that herb. But uh, one thing that it does that's really underrated is it it cuts that carb craving because when you get off of bread and different carbs you're definitely going to crave them i didn't crave them at all because unbeknownst to me i was taking black seed oil so you definitely want to take your black seed oil and also when you're making your teas one thing you want to think about is um the thicker the herb or the root because like bird eye root that's an actual root you don't want to just steep that for five minutes. It's a root. So you want to boil it for, you know, five minutes and then maybe steep it for two or three minutes after you actually boil the root. Then like black walnut hull, you know, they're hard little, you know, pebble looking things, but they're definitely not as thick as a root. 
So you may want to boil those for two minutes and then steep them for, you know, five minutes. But you'll get a feel for it as, as you know, you experiment with it and play with it. And there are definitely different people on online who teaches you how to make these teas. So it's just something to think about. Now, before you start fasting or start anything, one thing I recommend everybody does is eat an alkaline diet for about six days, three to six days, pure alkaline foods. Now, I have the um, saute salad. You know, you'll be able to watch the video for that. If you can just eat that for six days, it's going to get your digestive system going, really, really going. And what that's going to do is when you start eating these herbs, it's, you know, a lot of them are diuretics and they're going to want to strip the water from your body. So you're also going to want to put that water back in. What I do is whenever I urinate or if I number two and it's really watery for each time, I drink 10 gulps of water. That's just my number that I just came up with. It started with seven and it moved up to 10, but you figure out your body, but you just want to make sure you put that water back inside of you. But if you're not regular and you haven't, you know, softened up the stuff in your stomach, you can become constipated like I was for the first, you know, 10 days that I fasted. Nothing came out except water. But my whole story was I had worms. I had got worms from eating, you know, ribeye steak six days a week. What do you expect from a man who's making as much money as I am? You know, but I was eating ribeye steak six days a week and, um, buying six at a time and by the end of the week they were a little rancid I'm like, eh, I'll go and cook it up anyway and I ate them really rare so when I went through my journey I had no idea what I had I thought I had cancer like my throat was swelling up I had candida I had all kind of stuff so that's what really led me through this journey I spent like $500 on herbs trying to figure it out without you know going to the doctor to um, diagnose anything and one of the main reasons I was constipated is because those parasites didn't want to come out it wasn't until i started taking black walnut hull which honestly i can't tell you why i took it it was one of those things i was just searching and i was like, oh this herb does this oh this herb does this and i was take i was taking so many herbs like <laughs> talking about i was taking a herb every hour and i think it took me about 11 to 12 hours to get through my regimen every single day of each herb that i was taking and this switched up over time and now I refined it to a, an amazing, you know, amazing extent. But um, you want to you you want to make sure that you're regular because you can become constipated. So like I did, I went ten days just straight fasting, just eating herbs, and then um I went ahead and I began to eat my saute salad. That's when I came up with that, and stuff just started dropping. And that was when I actually seen. You know the parasites come out you know i won't go into it but that was around the same time that i started taking black walnut hull and that's what you know led me to understand what, what was going on in my body so you want to be constant you want to make sure that your 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 system is is moving you don't have to you know just go straight into fasting and a lot of you you know you're not hit you're not fighting anything you know life-threatening you just want to get your body back on track so you can definitely, like I said, eat your fruit in the morning, eat your herbs, I mean, eat your salads, eat your, your alkaline meal, and then for the rest of the day, just take your, your pills. Now, one last thing about fasting. It's best to do everything within a four-hour window. Now, me personally, when I started, I didn't really know much about herbs, so I was taking one herb an hour. Now, in my in my you know, journey and in my, the things that I've learned, I've come to believe, and it's not to say that this is the truth, that for me, when I'm taking herbs in pill form, I can take them once every 30 minutes. Now, none of these herbs will hurt you. You know, there are some strong ones like uh, wormwood. You don't want to take a whole lot of wormwood, you know, just, just, just Google your herbs and they'll tell you, oh, this herb is potent. <laughs> you know, even when you take it, you'll feel it. You're like, oh yeah, you'll taste it. Like if an herb tastes bitter, 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 you already know it's a potent herb. Like if you don't want to take it because it's nasty, yeah, it's potent. So you you want to do a little research on that herb. But um, these are just spices. These are literally just spices. They were they were meant for us to eat daily. They were meant to heal us. So you don't have to worry about you know being afraid of these herbs. But 
some herbs counteract one another and some herbs, you know, combine really well. You'll also find a lot of information on that on um, Alkaline Herbal Medicines by Aquil Amias. This guy, he, he did amazing work, you know. He studied everything Dr. Sebi did. And before I forget, pure Himalayan sea salt, okay? Now, salt, table salt, and sugar as well, they give us these crystallized salts and sugars which don't dissolve and they rip our blood vessels to shreds. That's why sugar is so bad. It's not as bad if you take, if, if it's regular pure cane sugar, it's not bad at all. But they give us these crystallized sugars that rip into our veins when they go into our bloodstream, creates um, scarring and scabs. And then these scabs, as they, you know, continue to be ripped up, become thicker and thicker. And then, you know, you get cholesterol to try to, help get this blood through these thin these 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 walls that are being built up with the scab and then you know different things are caught up on these walls and it like I said the cholesterol is trying to flush it out and that's how you get high blood pressure and all these different things so we we need to get off table salt no more table salt Himalayan sea salt or sea salt period and the reason why I say Himalayan because it's unrefined sea salt has like a non caking agent in it which, you know, I don't I don't want to eat. I don't know what that stuff is. <laughs> I can't even read the name of it. But, um, yeah, we all need to eat pure Himalayan sea salt. It has so many minerals in it. Like, it's so good for you. It has, like, I, I believe, like, almost 50% less sodium than salt. I thought salt was sodium when I started. But <laughs> it was, like, 50% less salt than, less sodium than salt. And it tastes way better, so... You guys really need to um, get off of the, the table salt. We're done with that stuff. And so now, um, one last thing that's going to send you guys all off on the right foot. There's going to be a link in the description for a website called Mucus List Diet. Okay. Now, this is an amazing website, but the page I'm going to link you to is the page where cell, Cellular Foods, which was Dr. Sabi's company, that's where he sold his herbs at. They're actually based out of um, Los Angeles right now. They're the ones you want to call to go to the Usha Foundation. But um, they actually put out a list of every single herb, every single combination for all of Dr. Sabi's products. You know, like, he's he's the man. He's the one who who, who figured this out, who did the research. You know, like like um, the bromide. Bromide is literally sea moss and bladder egg that that the green food plus every single compound that he made they're going to give you the recipes so you don't have to you know study too hard to figure out what herbs should i combine and what herbs should i use you know but me personally i just did one herb every hour because i was taking a lot of teas but now that i would say if you if if you study an herb and say for example if you have you know parasites like i did you know, when you're taking wormwood, you're taking olive leaf, you're taking raspberry leaf, and you're taking um, black walnut hull. All of those are designed to destroy parasites. So you want to take all of those together, you know, set off a bomb in your stomach. But say, for example, if you're taking something else like, you know, um, oregano, that's to get rid of mucus. So you want to take those separate. You want to take the, the one for the... Um, the one for the worms and if it's in tea form wait an hour and then take the one for the mucus and if you're taking any medication i'm not going to tell you to get off your medications but you know you have high blood pressure diabetes anything you're going to see the cures and over time as as your body begins to heal itself you'll you'll wean yourself off these medications but if you are taking those skittles that they're giving you give it at least a four hour window before you take an herb and take their their skittles because they give you chemicals you know things that cannot assimilate into your body that's why like with vitamins it gives you like 500 percent of your daily um, value because you're going to piss most of it out it can't assimilate into your cells into your body but the things they give you are really really harmful and you got to understand you know the medical industry is a business it's literally a business it's one of the biggest businesses on the face of this earth so it's not good business for you to know that you can heal yourself, that you don't need to, you know, buy a pill a day, 
You don't need to take a pill a day. You can just take these herbs that grow in nature. So I kind of want to end it with that. You know, there's so much information on this. You guys go out and perfect it. You know, my women learn to cook these recipes, heal your family. Let's use this on ourselves. You know, I've done it. You know, I can tell you with great, great result, man. My energy level beyond anything, anything it's ever been. You know, I've always been pretty healthy. I'm a, I've, I've been a dietary consultant for years now. Um, I have my own business called True Fitness. But right now I'm working a job. I'm in the oil field and I'm, I'm, I work, you know, 30 hour shifts at a time and I don't get sleepy. I don't get tired. You know, like no one can believe the amount of energy I have, you know, especially, you know, I'm not, I don't do any physical labor, but when I get out there and I do get after it, yeah, get after it. (laughs) So, man, I love you all, man. I just want you guys to understand how great and powerful you are, understand how beautiful you are and understand that all the answers are here, you know, from what love is, you know, the videos there, who we are, where we're going, it's all here. The lies are done completely. I promise you guys, the lies are done. So take in this knowledge, take it one day at a time. Don't rush anything. There's no rush for us. We've already won. This is the victory lap. There's no rush for us. Figure it out. Let's rise to the top, people. I love you guys. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I see a light up to heaven. Anybody want to go? My favorite number always been seven. You know what? I've been dreaming about this day a really, really long time. I've been pounding on the pavement, breaking out of my mind. I've been holding up the broken, nearly breaking my spine. Now I'm holding on to life, I'm really taking my time. I'm a star, I'm breaking heaven down to earth. And if your course is hell down, I'll be the driver for your hearse. Shout out to the devil, cause I killed him in the first. And I know he on his way, so let me bless him with his curse.